Yeah, thanks very much, Scotty. So we, we drove in on that little two-track to the northern side of the dam, and uh, Taxon actually joined us there. We had a little chat, um, and then I got off the vehicle to just have a quick little look, and there, lo and behold, lying in the long grass, probably 30 metres, 40 metres from where I was chatting with Tex, we had them all lying down. So they're not far from the dam. They're probably about 100 metres or so from where I left their tracks, just on the other side of the sort of river depression that enters the dam there. And um, if I'd continued on that, I probably would have found them in about two minutes. But we came around, checked the northern boundary. There was no exit point, which is awesome, which means that they ideally are within the block. And here we have them lying down. And look at her, the one with the injury. She has got a super full belly. She made very good, good work of that buffalo. And it's amazing how that wound has come along. I saw pictures of it from from last year. I could not believe at how badly injured she was. And yet she's still doing quite well. But it's because she's in a pride that she's able to deal with, deal with it. If she was on her own, I think she might have really, really struggled to overcome that injury. Oh, she's having a toilet. <laughs> Good morning, First Lady. You want to know if lions eat or digest the bones? They don't really digest bone. Um, the bone shards that they can break up, they will chew up and swallow, and that will come out in their dung, and that will be evident in some of the lion dung that goes quite white. But they're not able to break a very, very hard bone. And if, as we saw in that carcass, there's hardly anything left. I'm not sure if it, the buffalo is just so small that they were able to chew all those bones or if the hyenas actually picked up the leg bones and whatever else that was left there and removed it. But what you'll often find, because lions eat so quickly and so ravenously and so aggressively in a, in a pride, that you'll often find lion vomit where they have a bit of a fur ball and they cough up and often you'll find bone and hair and animal hoof in that fur ball because they can't actually digest it. Hyenas can digest most of that, but lions are not able to digest the fur or the hoof. And you often find it in a little bit of a of a vomit pile. I think uh, Scott uh, showed some of you a, a, f a fold of skin the other day that was covered in maggots, which was obviously regurgitated from a lion, and that was not very nice to look at, so we'll stop talking about it immediately. <laughs> okay, so there's a little bit of interest in them moving here. I'm not sure if um, what it is that they're moving for, but there's no animals at the dam that we could see, and they're in the shade, so they just can't help themselves. When one moves, they all move. So I'm going to come around to where we were just now and get a nice view of them coming down to the water. It's possible that they've suddenly decided that they are thirsty, so bear with me as we get around and try and get you a nice two shot. Let you know these are not the lions that had the white baby. That is from a pride. I only read about it this morning. A place called Ngala, which is not far from here. Um, in the Kruger as well. It is a, a beautiful lodge in the Kruger. And they documented a brand new white lion cub. And I think that, I only saw that this morning, so I think it's very, very new. Okay, there's one individual already by the dam, busy having a drink. Let's see if we can get down there. Sorry for the rush. Hold on there, Darby. Marvellous. Lions up and at him. Tell me when you're happy, Darby. Okay, there we go. Taxon is in the sighting with us, so if you do hear or see another vehicle. Yes, everybody, I'm very excited. Finding them like that is always, always cool. And um, just in the long grass, these ears 
just see these ears looking at you. I actually walked down to this point of the river and then saw them looking at me 30, 40 meters off to the east. Having a little, a little look and I'm glad that I did it before they moved down here to drink. <laughs> Avon wishes, that's a very interesting question. If a lion dies in a pride, does the rest of the pride eat them or leave them? I've, I've only ever seen or heard of one pride of lions that eats other lions, and that was the, uh, what are they called again? The Mapojo, that were renowned in the Sabi Sands around Londolozi, Singita. They used to kill lioness and eat them, but I've never seen it in any other lions before. So invariably they leave them, but I know it's not unheard of. I know there are reports out there. Oh, Dave, I think I've driven in some lion poo. It definitely smells like we are surrounded by lion dung. There's nothing quite like the smell. It's very easy to identify because it smells rancid and it is all around us. So I apologize, Dave. But um, for the viewers back home, you're very fortunate that you're not able to smell this. Hmm. <laughs> Here comes one of the, the bigger lionesses. Is this amber eyes? I think it is. I'm still learning these lions. I find it quite difficult to identify a female unless there's something obvious about her. Males have, have characteristics. Just sort of the scratches on the face, and different types of mane, different development, different black and brown. Really, really special to be able to be seeing this right now. So the currency of life, ladies and gentlemen, the dam, so you can see how Following up and moving around dams is a very good and positive way to find cats. I believe Taylor just popped into Buffalsook Dam last night, and that's when they spotted one of the lionesses that was drinking and then followed it back to, to the scene of the crime. There is the vehicle in the background from Vuya Taylor Lodge. So their bellies look relatively okay. There's a good chance that they are going to just find a nice shady spot now and spend the rest of the day right here. Yes, yes, Ryan, they do. They use it, their tongues like a scoop. Um, it is quite, it's like a dog. It's almost, I mean, if you've ever watched, I mean, I'm not sure if it's the same with lions, but I think it is the same as dogs, is that um, they actually, if you slow it down, I've seen people do slow-mos of dogs drinking in the water, it's actually going in underneath the tongue. I'm not 100% sure if that's the same with lions, but they don't suck it up like we do. You'd think that would be the obvious course, but I think they keep as little of their body in the water as possible. They don't like it very much. Isn't she beautiful? Second time in a week that we've been able to spend some really good time with these lions. So while we stay with these lions, we won't go anywhere. We'll see what they get up to. We'll keep you updated all the time. And while we do that, let's go to Taylor for an update with the Little Prince. Thanks, Taylor. So I'm just quickly moving the vehicle. We've got an elephant bull coming in from the right-hand side. and <laughs> The lions don't quite like the look of him. Now they're parked exactly where I wanted to park, so I apologize. I'm trying to move it so that we can see him and the lions. So please just give me a moment. I don't want to disturb these young cats. There we go. Is that all right, Darby? Oh, isn't that marvelous? You can tell that the... These two young males, or well, young females, they moved off, even though they're on the other side of the dam from the elephant. They saw him approach and they're like, hang on, <laughs> mum's nowhere to be seen. Let's rather move back. And they slinked off a few paces and now are watching the elephant quite closely, even though he's on the other side of the dam. 
and no real threat. The reputation of a big bull elephant precedes himself. Marvellous with the hippo and the reflection. All sorts of communication going on with that elephant as he walks down. There's lots of dung of other elephants there. And um, there's a whole breeding herd of buffalo that came through the dam yesterday. And it, he'd be picking up all sorts of signs of the other animals that have come down. He might even have smelt the lions because on the dam wall where he came across, the lions came in there last night. And it's very possible that he knows exactly what's going on in the area. Yes, Ellie. Ellie, fantastic. What a great name and what a great reflection, as you say. Look at that. Just the hippo to cause the ripple effect. This big male elephant, where he's going to, he's probably got a favorite spot to stand here and drink. Definitely his intention indicates he's coming to drink, but then also he didn't expect to find all of these lions and the smell of death in the air. And I'm pretty sure he'll be able to smell that. And you see that uncertainty in his foot there? He's unsure. But there we go. Now he's going to start drinking. Isn't that marvelous? Trish, the, the, the comment that you made there, or the question you made, elephants are not actually afraid of lions and leopards, but when it comes to... Sorry, Dave, <laughs> push my brake in here. When it comes to um, a female with her youngsters, lions are a potential threat to youngsters, and so they will chase them. Any predator out here has got the smell of death on them, and lions will chase them. It's not that they're afraid, it's that they don't want to tolerate them near them. So if they don't show them any sign of sort of dominance, then the lions might start playing games. And that's not something the elephants ever, ever want. Because what has happened in Savuti, in parts of Botswana, is the lions there hunt elephant. So the prides have gotten to very, very large number. And they will pick off any smaller, younger sort of male that's isolated from the herd. And they are taking them down now. And they have been for some time. It's been well documented. So it's it's the smell of death. Elephants are not on are very sorry, they are very intelligent animals, so they know for a fact that those lions are potentially dangerous. But a big elephant like that's got no threat against these lions. But they like to chase things regardless. Elephants are the biggest in the bush and anything gets in between them and the water and they will chase it or if anything sneaks around nearby them, be it a kudu or a warthog, it will cause the elephant to chase them away. They don't like surprises. They don't like to be surprised by anything. It's quite common to find anything that's lurking in the long grass to be chased away by the elephants purely because they can and often the lions will move. I think Scott was here a month ago or so, exactly here on Buffelswick Dam and he had the elephants chasing Amber Eyes who was mating with one of the Birminghams and the lions move off very quickly. They know that they can get away from the elephant but they're not willing to, to chance getting squashed. These two young females would not risk it at all, not without the support of the pride. Sorry about my head there. You can see their tummies are quite full. Lots of buffalo in there. They're going to go back to the shade to rejoin the pride. And while they do that, we're going to make a mission around to get another view from that side and see if they're going to stay. And while we do that, let's go over to Scotty D, who's found himself a wildebeest. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah, the whole pride seemingly has gotten up and walked the 25-odd yards or meters to exactly where it is that I was standing when I saw them. And now they're all lying down in the nice sort of on the sand. So I'm not sure what the difference is from where they were lying as opposed to where they are now lying, but at least now they have come out of the thickets because after their little drink they went back in there and all you could see was tawny bottoms. There was nothing else to be seen. And here comes the little youngster directly towards its mother that's lying on the ground there. Let's see if it has some space for some milk. It's got quite a fat tummy. But it's going to go straight for the nipple. There we go. Hello, Mum. 
just have a listen to that if we can. on mum's milk this youngster but definitely got to feed the diet probably at the moment would probably be about 80% milk 20 maybe 25% meat yes cuteness overload indeed and so marvelous that it came out and lay down right in front of us and then the cub came over because this all could have been happening in the thickets over there we wouldn't have been able to see anything so thank you Uncle Woomers for being so accommodating and so willing to show our viewers how you are and what you're doing slowly starting to descend on us. It's going to be a very warm afternoon. Jamie, I only count 10 at the moment, but there's a couple more, I think, still lying up in the thickets there. There should be 12. Um, there were male lions calling. Apparently, I heard one of the landowners from Bufusuk just now on the radio said there was huge amounts of lion roaring happening sort of north of Wuyatela Dam, and he was investigating that. Uh, there were apparently three subadult males in and around that area um, the last few days. Let's have a look. Here comes another individual at the back, which makes 11. It's probably the 12th one somewhere there. So here this female comes. Watch her. She's gonna, what's she going to do? She's going to walk straight to this other lioness. Probably give her a little bit of a rub on the head. Or is she just going to lie flat? Going to find her own little spot. Going to rub someone's head, indeed. There we go. Very important for them to keep up their allo grooming, their allo mimetic behaviour, their bonding. They are a unit. Although when you see them feeding, there's a lot of aggression towards each other. Afterwards, they quickly make up, kiss and make up, and they do that through grooming each other's faces, rubbing, licking, touching. All very important for lions, tactile communication. Very, very important. Touch. Raffaele, I made you night. I made my morning. Uh, second time this week we've managed to find these guys on foot. There's something very, very special about that. And uh, that didn't even make a sound, eh? Which is why you have to be very alert out here to the presence of lions. All you will see is an ear or two in the long grass as it looks at you and tries to wonder, is that edible or not? <laughs> so, Dave, if, if this lioness turns back again, I wonder if you can get her eyes it's quite interesting to see how their pupils change and now to look at if she looks back again have a look at the pupils they are completely completely little pinpricks in the eye that is one of the advantages or mechanisms okay the 12th lioness is on the or the 12th animal is on its way in from the back but those pinpricks and that ability for the lion to change the dilation of their pupil is what allows them to see so well at night those of you who were on safari with me last week when we had Osana um, and we were looking at him with the IR, you could see that his entire eye was filled with his pupil. Whereas now if she 
graces us with another little eye there. Look at that, just a pinprick. It allows them to control that light coming in. It is very small. Yes, and then at night they can dilate their pupils completely and they're able to see in the pitch blackness. Hello Trish, you'd like to know how long cubs will nurse for? Um, normally six months they're quite solid on the, on the milk and then after six months they start getting a little bit more meat but up to the first eight months to about a year um, a cub will, will try and nurse. Sometimes the lioness will allow it to nurse up until that stage. Sometimes it will stop it. But it's also about the amount of meat that is in the diet. That starts to increase after six months. And then by about eight months, they're pretty much fully weaned feeding on meat. But sometimes they'll take the chance to get milk. And if it's not stimulated, then the milking will stop. Um, but it also depends on the competition. When a lioness has got more than one cub, I think she produces more milk because they're competing for it. Watch, there's going to be a body slam now. Is there? Oh. Just being friendly. Everybody's a pillow in the lion world. Absolutely beautiful. We're just going to wipe the lens, get a bit of dust off there. Catbag wants to know if a lioness in the pride gets jealous when the other one's mating. I've never seen it. I mean, I've never seen jealousy in lions. Um, it's hard to really put that human sort of uh, behavior or what's the word, attribute to lions. I've never seen that kind of behavior in them. But I did see the Unkuhumas earlier this year when they were playing with a couple of tortoises. And there was definitely some jealousy amongst them between who was going to play with the tortoise and who wasn't. But that was in the youngsters. But generally in a pride, when the females are mating, they end up getting isolated from the, the pride for a few days while that mating is happening. Because they're not feeding, uh, the rest of the pride is feeding and so they're on the move. And after the mating, which lasts three to four days, they'll often rejoin the pride again. They're very hungry, unless they, they hunt on their own. They often get back to the pride who will assist them to hunt again. But I don't think so. But what often happens is females will estrus, come into estrus at the same time. So they will mate at similar times. Okay, so folks, we are going to... I'm asking you, but I think we can come back here. Apparently, there's been a leopard spot just around the corner. These lions are not going anywhere. We can always come back and see them, but let's maybe see if we can go find ourselves a leopard. I'm going to take that as a yes for everybody, and all of those of you who say no, don't worry. We will come back if you say no. But if we find the leopard, we can always come back anyway. Okay, so. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let me just find out exactly. Uh, last station, I'm coming from Bufusuk Dam. I'd like to follow up. What's the best approach? Okay, so we're going to go over to Scott while we try and follow up on this leopard and get one communication at a time in my ear, and then we'll go to Scott and then come back to us and see what excitement unfolds.